YouTube, what is good? It's your man Ribs from Ribs Doing Film Things. Every single week I post a new video about film photography, so if that's your thing, go ahead and subscribe. Cross-processing isn't anything new, of course. A lot of people will cross-process E6 using C41 chemicals because they don't have the E6 chemicals at home. I did the exact opposite, which is a use case I haven't really seen on the internet. So I did some research and tried to see what the internet would say, but it looks like, although possible, there's not really a lot out there. It doesn't seem like people do this very often. I put out a video recently, you can check it above in the link there, and it was about shooting expired film. Basically, I bought a whole bunch of expired film from eBay, and a lot of it was slide film. So I took one of those rolls, put it in my camera, shot it, and developed it how you would develop slide film with E6 chemicals. Turns out, this was not slide film, this was C41 film and should have been developed with C41 chemicals. I'd consider it a happy accident actually because the results are pretty cool. And I was convinced it was slide film until someone watched one of my videos and told me, hey, it looks like that box has C41 on it, not E6. I double checked and they were 100% right. So herein lies the whole point of this video. When I saw the results I got from the original roll that I accidentally cross-processed, I decided, can I replicate this? Is this actually something that's viable? Can I turn C41 into slide film on the regular? Let's just say this experiment was quite interesting. Before we look at the experiment, I actually wanna show you some of the photos from the original C41 roll that I processed in E6. I actually really like the photos. There's clearly a color cast on there. You would say it's imperfect, but I really like the look overall. And I was convinced that the color cast was due to the film being expired. I had no idea that it would have to do with the actual processing. The color cast is very obvious when you look at the positives on top of one of those LED lights. You can see there's a really strong kind of blue tint to this, and I think this actually resembles what some slide film actually looks like. Interestingly enough, when I started running my experiments, I was seeing very different results. So my initial experimentation was a big failure. It's not because the process itself is impossible or scalable, it's because my chemicals were actually exhausted. I had E6 chemicals that I had used about five or six times already, and I wasn't keeping strict count, so when I did these C41 rolls in there, they actually stood no chance. As you can see, the exposure never developed properly, the color cast is extremely strong, and these images are basically unusable. One roll was less horrible than the other, but overall, it just wasn't happening for these two. I'll admit, at this point, I think I was gonna consider this experiment a failure, but then I realized I should just mix new chemicals. I needed a new batch anyway, since I was gonna shoot some ectochrome later on this week. I went on a really long walk this weekend, walking about one and a half hours in each direction, and I walked to the Tower Bridge in London. There's nobody there nowadays, and it's usually a very big tourist hotspot. I took a whole bunch of pics that I was really happy with, and I was excited to develop these. The anticipation was even worse because of the fact that I was going to cross-process these and hope that things were actually gonna come out properly. Here's the result. What do y'all think about the pics? Let me know, do you like them? Any particular ones you think are cool? Is this not worth it at all? Let me know what you think in the comments. So overall, I think I would recommend this cross-processing method. It's obviously not perfect, and it's definitely not designed to be done this way, but I think the results are pretty cool. Here's a couple tips and tricks that I have for you in case you're looking to do this. The first tip I have is, if you're going to use a camera that has an automatic meter that you trust, or you're gonna be very careful about metering, then I think it's worthwhile your time for you to develop this way. If you're shooting images that are not properly exposed, you're probably gonna screw them up pretty bad, only because when you turn this into slide film, the exposure latitude kinda disappears. The second and pretty obvious thing is that your chemicals need to be in good condition, but you definitely don't wanna mess around with the chemicals that are exhausted. I do this often with my C41 chemicals. I kinda push them further than they should be, and usually the results are very good, but with E6, you really don't have this choice. Additionally, one thing I haven't done yet, which I definitely wanna caution you on, is developing a C41 and an E6 roll together with E6 chemicals. I have no idea if the C41 roll is going to affect the E6 roll in any way. So if you're going to cross process, I'd recommend you do that alone. And finally, it's very obvious that there's gonna be some color shifts in your images. When the C41 turns into slide, honestly, I think it depends on the specific roll of film. As you saw, my expired roll from 15 years ago was very different than the Kodak Gold roll that I developed recently. I don't know if that was because it was expired or because the films are very different, but one was very blue and one was very magenta. I have no idea why, and this is definitely something I'm gonna experiment with more. Regardless, you're going to have to edit these photos in Lightroom to get them, so a nice balance. I'm curious, am I the only one who's interested in this? Does anybody else think this is worth your time? Let me know. 
on the whole, I think I would definitely recommend you experiment with this. If you have some rolls of cheap film that you shot very casually around town or maybe on a trip, something that's not too important, then I definitely recommend you try with one of those rolls. Definitely don't do this with any shots that you really, really care about. At the end of the day, cross-processing delivers a look, just like any other photographic technique will deliver a look. If that's your thing, then go ahead. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give me a like. And if you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. I've got a couple of really cool video ideas cooking up right now, so I'm really excited to share those with you in a bit. Until then, y'all, peace.